Hey there guys, it's Joey. And this is going to be a video about the totem animal stuff. Uh, I've had a few requests for discussing them at length and how to find your own and for meditations and things. So I thought what I would do is I would do this video. I've set up how a, a way of, of looking at what you might want to do when setting up for this sort of thing. I'm going to talk you through some ideas, my thoughts and feelings on the issue, and it's just my thoughts, so <clears throat> this is by no means a clear-cut copy and paste guide, I'm not going to say I'm right about it, it's just my feelings on the matter, and then I'm going to do a meditation to help those who would like a guided meditation, and I decided to just go with what spirit guided me to say within this video, within this, within the whole video, but within the guided meditation as well. Because I was thinking, do I write it down? Do I have a pre-constructed thing? And I thought, probably not. Probably the best way of doing this is just to be as spirit guides me to be. So first and foremost, totem animal is different from spirit guide animal. And this is my understanding of it. This is how I perceive it. Your spirit guide can come in any form. You know, a lot of people work with humans and, you know, with animal spirit guides as well. And my understanding of that is it being like a shamanistic representation of the spirit guide you are working with. Perhaps they shape shift in another realm into animals. Perhaps it's easier for your psyche to connect with animal energy to guide, be guided by your spirit guides who protect you and watch over you. The sets that I actually sell would work perfectly fine for spirit guides and connection with spirit guides if that's what you wanted to do with them. But the t idea of the totem animal is the, I, the idea of totem is, is a representation of something else. So in this circumstance it would be like your inner animal spirit sort of thing, your your totem. And the idea of connecting to your animal totem rather than your guides is that it is a sort of symbolic representation of yourself, your strengths perhaps, your weaknesses, the attributes which are within you and are important to your life path journey. Things that resonate within your soul might be to do with this animal. So, I am reasonably certain that whereas my spirit guides have shown up as wolves, that I am reasonably certain that my inner animal, my totem animal, is probably a fox. And this comes about in a number of different ways. And meditation is one, and there's, uh, I'm going to do that at the end as I said, for, for people who want that guided meditation. But there are other ways of identifying your totem animal. So if you have an animal that you are just drawn to and you don't understand why fully, then that sort of natural pull is sort of that spiritual connection without really understanding where it comes from. The animal might show up all over the place. You know, you might see them in life or if it's not an animal that you can see so much in life, say your um, spirit animal turned out to be like an orca whale or something, you might just be coming across stories about them all the time, you might be seeing pictures of them all the time, you might get random emails about them, you know, it, they just pop up all over the place without any real explanation as to why that is, is the case. You might feel very strongly about the animal welfare of that particular animal, particular animal and you've always felt very strongly about it rather than in a broader sense where you might feel strongly about animal rights in a broader sense but perhaps that one animal you know it's, it's, you're drawn to it it's like fox hunting that has always always riled me up more than I mean a lot of other things do rile me up because obviously being a pagan you, you don't like animal well being a decent human being you don't like animal cruelty but fox hunting when I was growing up was always something that stuck out to me and, and made me feel even more ill. I understand that you know some people may or may not argue the other side of that but I, that's not what this is about so let, let's not have that 
here. Um, for example, one of my favourite books growing up, in fact probably my favourite book growing up, was Roald Dahl's Fantastic Mr Fox. I was obsessed with that as a kid. I remember writing anti-fox hunting poems as a kid. I remember seeing foxes around and I've had some interesting experiences with them in, in real life. One of my earliest memories is seeing a fox in the garden. So there's all those little hints and clues and things about your inner animal and the whole point of connecting to it is for a better understanding between yourself and your soul. It's just another way of understanding yourself and your journey and your path and like where certain traits come from and certain urges come from and it's just key knowledge like that and understanding and being at one with yourself can help you further along your path and how obviously you interact with that is personal and I'm not going to tell anybody how they should or should not interact, interpret that information. There may be many different animals that you resonate with. It, you might not necessarily have one. I'm sure some people probably have more than one. Um, just the same way that you know you can have more than one spirit guide and your spirit guides can change over time as you get further down your path and evolve. So the setup in front of you is an idea of how you might want to approach the meditation aspect of things. So I've got an incense burning, I've got my working candle going, I've also got one of my spell cauldrons going and that's actually a divination one which I anoint with my divination oil and has divination herbs within it. This is just an idea of a setup. If you already had an idea of which animal you th were pretty sure with, you could then have things in the background like I have, like the beautiful picture my friend sent me and the creations that I've created. You could have your own ideas there. You could have a crystal that you thought resonated with it. Let's take the orca again as an example. So take a black and white stone. Um, say you had a, a feeling that it might be like a lion, you might want like a, a sunstone or you know all the whatever you felt right about and if you weren't sure then you could literally just have a crystal that you felt would help with divination and or grounding you. You could have one of each. I, for example, in that circumstance would use amethyst for opening up to spiritual information. But the, the choice of the stone and everything is yours. The incense you can see burning there is frankincense and myrrh. Um, again, if you wanted to use a loose incense, that would be up to you. But if for meditation, it can often be safer just to use a stick, just, you know, in, in case you knock it or whatever, in case you drift off a bit while you're meditating. The oil there is actually the, the fox oil, and you could, if you had got one of these things, you, you or made one, you could anoint yourself with the oils to help that process, to help you connect. Again, you could also use like your own divination oils as long as they are safe to use on your skin. And if you created them, then you know that. So what I think I will do now is I've explained everything that I think I need to explain. If there are any questions, just pop them down at the bottom. And what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to have a little have a little breath here and then advise how you might want to set up and then have a breath and then go through my on-spot spirit guided meditation. In order to be prepared for the totem animal meditation, you may wish to set up a small altar space. You may wish to set up some of your favourite incense and perhaps have a candle lit, perhaps your working candle or a candle for divination. None of these things are essential but can aid in meditation. Make sure you are comfortable and safe in your environment. Be somewhere that you will not be disturbed. Take the phone off the hook, turn all your electronics off, and be at peace with the space around you. If you feel the need to cleanse your spa space or cleanse yourself beforehand, act on those desires.
you can cleanse your own space by smudging with incense, a smudge stick or perhaps a salt water mix. You can cleanse yourself by having a ritual bath containing salt or a shower and just go through your exercises of breathing and pushing light through your chakras. Anything you feel the need to do to be cleansed. If you feel the need to set up a circle, you could also do that prior to the meditation. However, these things are personal preference. This is a guided meditation to help you find your totem animal. Your totem animal is the animal which resides within your spirit, within your soul the animal that resonates with you. You may already have a feeling as to which animal resonates most with your soul at the present time. Discovering your totem animal can help progress you further along your path and understand yourself in animalistic terms, where your strengths may come from, where your weaknesses may come from, and perhaps guidance on what can help you best at this time in your life. Know that you are in a safe space. Know that you are calm and comfortable and loved. Feel your connection to the universe as a warm pulsing light. Feel yourself sinking into a gentle state of safety wrapped in the light of source, of God energy, of Goddess energy. You are balanced, you are one, you are connected with the universe. As you close your eyes, you visualize yourself being surrounded at first by darkness. This is not a negative space, it is merely the beginning of our journey. A small pinprick of light comes from above your head and grows and grows until you realize that it is the sun between the trees. You visualize yourself in an ancient grove surrounded by a circle of trees. You are sat comfortably in the middle of this circle on warm, comfortable moss that supports you and grounds you and connects you to the earth. You see the gentle breeze of air swaying through the green leaves that surround you from the trees. This spot is safe and sacred. The sun is warm upon your face and lights up the circle. Far away you can hear the gentle gurgling of a stream and you know that water is nearby. You are surrounded by each of the elements. Fire from the warm sun on your face, water from the babbling brook. Earth is all around in the swaying of the trees and the moss by your feet. Air moves around you gently round the circle and you hear the rustling and spirit is within and without. You take a moment to enjoy the peace of this place. You stand up and you close your eyes again just feeling the warmth and beauty of this place and you allow your soul to ask without ever uttering a word who am I? Which animal represents myself? Where is my spirit yearning to take me? Allow yourself to be drawn to whichever element you feel that your animal may appear from. 
if you feel the animal could come from the skies, then know this in your heart and look up and see. If you feel your animal could come from the water, walk towards the stream and if the stream needs to evolve and expand into the ocean, allow it to do so and look into those depths and see your animal. If you feel that your animal may be among the trees of nature, allow yourself to gently walk up to those trees and peer around them and see your animal looking back at you. If you feel your animal might be beneath the earth, then place your palms to the ground and with the sight all knowing, see through the ground and see your animal. Know that this animal is a part of yourself, is a reflection of yourself. It is like looking into a mirror and seeing your animal self looking at you. Understand why this animal has been sent to you. Understand the qualities of which you admire about this animal, the qualities you admire about yourself. You may reach out and touch your animal for it will not be afraid of you. And feel the connection between you, your spirit self and your animal self. How does it feel? How does it look? And how does it touch you on a soul level? These are all answers which you need not say aloud, but merely allow to resonate within your soul. You are safe in this space. And once you know which animal is yours and yours alone, go back to the center of the circle and sit back down upon that warm moss and allow yourself to absorb the light and energy of this place and close your eyes and allow yourself to come back gently to yourself allow the images to fade but the memories to stay as the light of this place gently moves out of the sphere and you come back to yourself on the physical plane where you are safe, in your home or in your space. Many blessings.